so speak ye and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. A midweek rapture, or what's often called a post-trib pre-wrath rapture, is what the Bible teaches. In Daniel chapter 9, he says, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week shall he cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation. And that determined shall be poured out upon the desolation. What's he saying? Okay, at the end times, there's a week. There's a year, a seven-year period. And in the midst of that week, there's going to be the abomination of desolation. So a midweek rapture is understanding that in Revelation 12, it says, the devil is come down unto you having great wrath. And we know that period is three and a half years. We know after that, the Lord pours out his wrath for three and a half years. So in the midst of that week, when the devil brings everything to consummation, it's called the abomination of desolation. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? He says, when's all this going to happen, right? When are you coming back, Jesus? What's the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Now this phrase, the, the coming of the Lord, is used in 1 Thessalonians 4. It says, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So 1 Corinthians 15 is saying, the coming of the Lord is when we are resurrected. Verse 16, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is what we saw earlier, how that there will be those at the last trump, the twinkling of an eye. There'll be change, what we saw in 1 Corinthians 15 that was called the coming of the Lord. Here in 1 Thessalonians 4, it's called the catching up, if you will. Really, it's called the coming of the Lord, very clearly. So the rapture or the catching up is called the coming of the Lord in the Bible. In Matthew, Mark, Luke, uh, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians. We see it in 1 Corinthians also. Continuing in Matthew 24, look at verse number 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. So as Jesus answers their question, when will, when's your coming and when will these things be? What's he say? When you see the abomination of desolation, when you see the abomination of desolation, this is exactly what was stated in Daniel chapter 9. He said, He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week shall he cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. So the Old Testament, there's an abomination of desolation. When the Antichrist comes, he's going to make it desolate. And Jesus is saying, that is a sign of my coming. That must happen first. In fact, hold your finger here and go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. The midweek rapture, post-trib, pre-wrath as it's also called. The Bible teaches that as Christians, we will endure the wrath of the devil for about three and a half years. And then it will come to a point of the abomination of desolation with the Antichrist. And then the coming of the Lord. We which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. We will see the Lord Jesus come in the clouds and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. There it is again, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, and by our gathering together unto him. That's the resurrection when we're gathered together unto him. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Again, the abomination of desolation. The son of perdition, that man of sin. Let no man deceive you. The coming of the Lord won't happen until after 
the abomination of desolation until after the Antichrist is revealed. It describes him more in verse 4. For whoso opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Go back to Matthew 24. So it describes that abomination of desolation for when he sits in the holy place. So he'll, they'll build a temple. He'll claim that he is God. He will claim that he is the God of the Jews. And guess what? The world will probably follow them. The multitude will go along with it and say, well, this guy must be God because he says he is. And he will work signs and miracles. And the world will come together as a new world order with a new financial system and a new religion. And this Antichrist will be at the head of it all. And then he makes it desolate. He angers God so much that in the midst of that week, there's an overspreading of abomination so much that it makes it all desolate. Back in Matthew 24, look at verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That's the sign. The Son of Man coming. That's what we look forward to for this resurrection. But first, we have to endure the wrath of the dragon. That's bad news. But the good news is the Holy Spirit's with you. The good news is we will have victory over death in the resurrection. Look at the next verse, verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Again, there's the gathering. What do we have to look forward to? Listen, when this body ceases to live, and this body dies, and they put it in a hole in the ground, your soul is going somewhere, and it's not based on how good of a person you are. It's based on what you're trusting in to go to heaven. It's whether or not you've rejected the gospel in the Lord Jesus Christ, or whether you humble yourself and you believe. And if you believe and you're saved, and you obey God, there's a reward. For those of us that are saved, the more that you obey God, there's more reward coming in the eternal judgment. Salvation is forever. Eternity is I, I can't even begin to describe it. It's, it's, like, it's like explaining a combustion engine to a dog. He can't comprehend it. And as God gives us these, these scriptures trying to describe the resurrection, the eternal judgment, the new heaven and the new earth, we do the best we can to comprehend it. And this is a complex subject. But in the simplicity of Christ, He loved us enough. He died for our sins. But He didn't stay in the grave, did He? He rose again. And I believe that He was God and He paid for all my sins. I have confidence in His resurrection. And He says, I also will be resurrected like He is. So as I get older and as we go farther down this path of life and we, we look at death coming, it could come to any of us tomorrow. Any one of us could die tonight, tomorrow. But we shouldn't have fear. If you've trusted the Lord, if you're saved, then just spend your time here obeying God, living for the Lord. You have a righteous reward coming, and it's something amazing. I, I imagine when we get there, all of us, to a certain extent, will say, I wish I had done more while I was here. And those that end up in hell, because they've hardened their heart against God, because they mock God and they laugh at God, and they think they can do whatever they want, they will be in hell forever. They're going to cry. They're going to weep. They're going to mourn. They're going to gnash their teeth. They're going to say, why? That day is coming for all of us. Your choices now will determine your eternal judgment. Will you be resurrected unto life? Or will you spend eternity in the lake of fire? So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the